when Star OV is launched, the operator attempts to make visual contact and keep the turtle in view for as long as possible. Some of the observations were more than 60 minutes long. Reaction to the ROV was minimal. Most commonly, sea turtles investigated the ROV for a few moments before returning to normal behavior. Much of the investigation was focused on the camera model. A few sea turtles had a stronger reaction to the presence of the ROV. These included prolonged physical rubbing, predator avoidance behavior, and aggression. This juvenile attacked the ROV when its benthic forging was interrupted. While interesting, these reactions to the ROV were rare. Most turtles ignored the ROV and allowed detailed investigation of behavior. This allowed us to collect information on their behavior like social and interspecies interactions, prey forging, flipper beats, and breathing rates. The ROV tracked the turtles very well and only had trouble maintaining contact on deep dives. The troublesome dives occurred when the turtles became negatively buoyant and plunged to the seafloor. Eventually, we learned to keep up with the turtles by anticipating their behavior. The ROV has some strong benefits over other observation methods. The unique perspective can capture information not available to shell-mounted cams. The ROV is safer than divers, particularly because the turtle's quick changes in depth, the length of observations, and also the presence of predators. With the ROV, we were able to collect detailed information on sea turtle interactions. This circling is similar to behavior observed at breeding sites. We never recorded an attempt at mounting, but several observations of this behavior were recorded. During this behavior, one turtle usually exhibited pursuit, rubbing and biting, while the other showed avoidance behavior, swimming in tight circles and inverting. Since some of the turtles were juveniles, a sex identification could not always be made. In addition to social interactions, we were able to collect information on interspecies interactions as well. In all, we were able to identify five non-prey species interactions. Most of these species seem to use turtles as refuge in the water column. Only one species, the barrelfish, followed the sea turtles through its benthic dives. Other species seemed attracted by disturbance caused by benthic forging of the turtles. Some species exhibited behaviors that were harder to classify. For example, the rubbing by this Mai Mai. The ROV was also very useful for investigating foraging and prey items. The ROV could be maneuvered for better viewing of the events, and the sea turtles seemed indifferent to its presence. The turtles fed mostly on invertebrates, such as jellyfish, crabs, and scallops. Most of the turtles' benthic foraging was spent in pursuit of crabs. The ROV allowed us to gather some great information on offshore sea turtle behavior and capture some rare events. For example, foraging in cold water, below temperatures expected to cause cold stunning, and feeding on novel prey items like scallops. From 2008 to 2014, we conducted 10 sampling trips and were able to collect about 45 hours of video of 70 different turtles. Video usable in analysis was produced at a rate of 43.5% of effort. The ROV proved a versatile and effective tool for investigating sea turtle behavior. Much of the footage we collected was of loggerheads visually forging in the water column and along the sea bottom. This information is important. If we can identify the drivers of sea turtle behavior, we have a better chance of mitigating sea turtle and human interactions.